All right, very good morning. Wednesday, the 5th of January. Let's hop straight into it and talk about the charts this morning at the European Open and relatively flat across the major asset classes. So whether you're looking at the currency pairs top left, gold top right, T-notes bottom right, or WTI crude at the bottom center chart, they're all pretty much trading unchanged. The one thing that is moving a little bit are European equity index futures, just gone through the cash open here, 8 a.m. in London, and just seeing a bit of an uptick, DAX positive up around 41 ticks in the futures market, and US equity index futures just coming off their APAC lows following what was a mixed close on Wall Street. We finished pretty flat in the S&P, uh, gains around 0.6 in the Dow, losses in the NASDAQ of around 1.3% as tech firms generally globally being weighed at a little bit at the moment by the higher move seen in US Treasury yields. But in terms of yesterday's session, one thing I did just want to touch upon because still an overarching theme generally, globally, both in mainstream uh, media and markets still is the Omicron variant. And as I'm sure you've read, we're seeing record numbers of new cases in the likes of UK, France, Italy, in the US, topping a million, in fact. And yet, overall, the belief seems to be uh, emerging around or at least um, gaining traction around the economic threat of the Omicron coronavirus variant being somewhat limited. That being at the end, as we trickle down through from case rates down to proportionate amounts of hospitalizations, although there is pressure growing in the likes of the UK and so on, as admitted by the UK Prime Minister yesterday, the idea here is that more onerous restrictions are unlikely to be needed. And that means then that the economic consequence is far less severe than what we've had in previous instances in the pandemic around a year ago or so. And as such, then travel and leisure stocks, as you can see here from the headlines from yesterday in London listed shares, the budget carrier Wizz Air was up around 12%. British Airways owner IAG was up a similar margin. EasyJet also added around 9% at the close in London trade yesterday. Also as well, crude oil gained in New York on Mondays or I should say Tuesday session. Um, and that came really twofold, as I've described then, helping on the demand side of things, but also more broadly from an OPEC um, expectation, all pretty much as planned. So OPEC Plus agreed to revive more halted production as the outlook for global oil markets has improved, demand largely withstanding the new coronavirus variant. So they continue to bring on more oil as they go through their monthly kind of temperature checks of where we're at at this point in time. Not much surprise there, but crude oil did move higher, pretty much under the same um, idea as what was driving some of those uh, travel and leisure stock names. Um, one thing, though, from the overnight session, a little bit more sour, you could say, um, in APAC trade. Uh, generally, as I said, global tech firms under a bit of pressure did push the dollar to a five-year high against the Japanese yen in overnight trade. Uh, Hong Kong in particular, tech stocks lost about nearly 4%. Pressure there coming from China's fines. The authorities still cracking down on the tech sector. So Alibaba, Tencent uh, were some of those names falling uh, after they failed to properly report about a dozen deals. And so that amid new cybersecurity rules continues to be a bit of a headache for that space. Um, then over um, overnight as well, just to uh, follow up on some of the things we were talking about yesterday, was coming out of um, the Chinese Securities Journal, which reported that China to timely replenish liquidity shortfalls with cash injections before the Lunar New Year holiday. And there was some, um, I guess, nervousness um, emanating really from a Bloomberg article talking about the large volume of the potential squeeze that that market could see and the negative connotations that could have. However, as is nearly always the case, given the global shutdown or the, the Chinese national shutdown that we see for Lunar New Year holiday in a couple of weeks time, uh, they're gonna come in and, and, and give plenty of liquidity, one would imagine, to um, avert, avert any type of disruption that, that that holiday could cause. So everything as you would expect. Otherwise, other headlines. We did have a press conference, of course, with the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson yesterday, said the UK can weather a record wave of COVID-19 sweeping the country without tighter restrictions. And again, goes back to the first point that we we're saying was why some of those airline stocks were soaring yesterday. Um, that came even as he warned the NHS is under growing strain, and we saw a record 218,000 cases of coronavirus reported on Tuesday. 
Um, there is a bit of a backlog, some would say, with the reporting numbers at the moment. We've obviously just had Christmas and the New Year. Uh, the US set a global record of um, almost a million new coronavirus infections on Monday, according to a Reuters tally. That's nearly double the country's peak hit just a week ago. Um, but reporting delays over Christmas and more people getting tested ahead of the holidays is thought likely to have contributed to some extent to that very high figure. A um, couple of things in context here um, that, again, I think help is hospital admissions average 14,800 per day last week in the US. That is up 63%, but is lower than the 16,500 of a year ago. Um, deaths have also been stable over the last fortnight, averaging about 1,200 a day, and that compares with around 3,400 that we were seeing a year ago. So quite substantially lower there on that final point. All right, elsewhere, just on Bitcoin, really, it's been fairly dull um, looking at uh, Bitcoin more recently, uh, certainly a little bit more somewhat stability uh, coming into some of these, these crypto currencies of late. Um, bit of a sensational headline. Goldman says Bitcoin 100,000 a possibility by taking on gold. Now, don't get excited. This isn't going to happen tomorrow. They're pretty much talking about a five year outlook here. So to give you a bit of what their, their, their rationale and what they're talking about, they say Bitcoin will continue to take market share from gold as part of a broader adoption of digital assets, making the often touted price prediction of 100,000 by advocates a possibility. Um, Goldman estimates Bitcoin's float adjusted market capitalization is just under 700 billion US dollars. That accounts for 20% share of the store of value market. Now, the store of value, where you park your cash in terms of times of strife, traditionally that being gold. But what they're generally saying is that as Bitcoin has more uh, kind of adoption, that starts to build into that store of value kind of um, asset, if you like. Um, and that being comprised of Bitcoin and gold and the value of gold that's available for investment is estimated at 2.6 trillion US dollars. And if Bitcoin share of the store of value market was hypothetically to rise to 50 percent, they're saying around currently 20 um, percent over the next five years, the price increase would be a tantamount to around 100,000 for a compound annualized return of 17 or 18 percent. So again, it's a little bit more bold as a headline, as you would expect news agencies to spin. It's not really, I'd say, that exciting, uh, to be quite honest. I'd, I'd, I'd be shocked if Bitcoin wasn't at 100,000 in five years' time, just given the, the where we're heading with decentralized finance. Um, otherwise, just having a look at the calendar for today, um, what have we got on the docket? Well, you've got your services, uh, PMIs coming out from Europe. However, these are December final numbers, so... They're not going to be particularly exciting or uh, market moving. Um, heading into non-farm payrolls, of course, which we get on Friday, you do have the ADP national employment figure coming out this afternoon at 115, expected to be relatively stable from last month's 534 to come in a headline expectation of 500K. Um, then you've got your relevant uh, US market final reading as well for services PMI at 245. You've got oil inventory data coming out this afternoon. And that comes after we had the API data last night. Some actually quite meaningful numbers from a statistical perspective. The drawdown in crude last night was 6.432 million. That was the biggest drawdown since the summer. Um, gasoline, though, was a big build. Biggest is April 2020 at 7 million. Um, however, how much did oil move? Hardly anything at all. Um, don't forget it did come in the context of still the ongoing um, um, developments on the Omicron side, but also the OPEC Plus meeting yesterday. So it very much got brushed aside. But these will be your reference points for those DOEs when they hit the tape at 3.30 this afternoon. And then the final thing to speak of will be the FMC minutes. They'll be coming out at 7 o'clock later on this evening, London time. They may shed some more light on the potential pace of rate hikes going forward. You'll remember we had the latest dot plots coming out of the, the, the US central bank in there their last meeting, which looked a little bit like this. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the dot plots, what essentially this is, is every alternative meeting four times a year when the FMC gather, 
they ask those official rules for where do they see interest rates at the end of that year and the subsequent years thereafter. And quarter to quarter, we get to see the changes that they see according to economic conditions of how steep or shallow then the rate trajectory curve is, is changed. And what we saw, if you remember, at the last meeting was that Fed officials in the dot plots said expectations were for three quarter percentage point increases to the key federal funds rate uh, in 2022. And so any more color around that, just given some of the yield movement we've seen since the commencement of 2022, which has been much more aggressive, akin to potentially the idea of the Fed moving even earlier than probably what would be anticipated being a June SEP deck hike to something more towards potentially March, which is when then the timing is for the end of the uh, tapering process, which is well underway at this present point in time. So looking for more color. Um, interesting to note that the Uber Dove um, from the FMC, Neil Kashkari was speaking yesterday and he said he now sees and supports two rate increases this year to counter risks posed by inflation. So even the most dovish member is not quite seeing three, but is definitely seeing two rate hikes at this point in time. So kind of moving up the board, if you like. All right, that is it. Going to leave it there. Uh, and wish you guys a good day. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon, updates like this coming every morning, and then ad hoc pieces coming as and when there's major news to talk about. All right, guys, have a good day and see you tomorrow.